Um, but thank you very much for joining us today. We know it's uh, incredibly challenging times for you all at the moment uh, with a lot of uncertainty and, you know, information to digest every day. Um, so we really appreciate you making the time to come along today. Um, I think everyone joining us today participated last week. Uh, if it's your first session, let me know in the chat channel and I'll just do a little bit more backgrounding. Otherwise, uh, we're going to dive straight in and use the time today to talk about some coding concepts and also talk about what we want to cover in the session with kids on Thursday. So next slide, please, Lindsay. Sure. <laughs> controlling Thanks. Lindsay instead of remote controlling Lindsay's computer. Um, um, did you want me to pass on remote controls? No, that's fine. I think uh, let's, let's run with this. Um, I don't think we need to do the match today. We're a nice small group. Um, but I would like to know if you are teaching primary or secondary, just so I'm aware of what we're covering. And maybe just look to the next slide, Lindsay. Um, if you're primary, if you're planning to join on Thursday with your students, um, if you can annotate the screen and pop a little symbol into the right box for you, um, and also stamp if you were here last week. At the moment, I'll just share. Oh, uh, you share the image? I will, yes. Thank you. This one here. There we go. There we go. So pop an animation on the screen. And we can see who we've got on the call and whether you're primary, secondary, um, and also joining on Thursday to help with our planning. Is anyone able to annotate? I don't see any yet. Um, if you need a refresh on annotating, you can see uh, on the left hand side of the slide there's a little feature. Actually, I think it's grayed out, is it? I can zoom in and zoom out. But I think it's grayed out. Maybe just type in the chat. There's only a couple of us. Yeah. Pop in, let us know whether you're primary or secondary. Oop, there we go. Try that. Oh, I can do it. Okay. There we go. Excellent. Sorry, still still baby steps for me. <laughs> but I'm getting there. Okay. I'm going to put myself down as a primary teacher, just as an example. So there we go. I've managed to annotate. Um, you can click on the little squiggle on the left-hand side of your screen now and type or add a symbol on the screen. Excellent. And thank you, Summer Yellow Cross, you were here last week. Thank you. Shall we? Okay. We need to jump back. Okay, yeah, let's just jump back into the slides. Okay, there we go. Okay, what have we got on the cards this week? Um, Similar to last week, we're going to do a little bit of PD as a group today, and we'll also foreshadow what's coming up on Thursday for you for the session that we run for the students. So the focus of the session this week is on the Turtle software, which we will show you soon. Turtle is software that um, teaches you coding while you make shapes. So it's a strong link into maths and geometry, um, and you control a small turtle to move and leave a line on the page by using simple instructions to go forward and to turn and to use different colors. So we'll be demonstrating that today and we'll do some coding together to work through some turtle problems. Um, this will also help us all get a bit more familiar with the Grok learning interface. Um, as well as that, the two unplugged activities that we wanted, well, so the one unplugged activity really that we wanna talk about is a concept that's very important, particularly in primary with coding which is really drilling into understanding if statements and else statements. So we're going to go through that in detail. That's what we refer to in the curriculum as branching. Um, and before we even do that, we're gonna have a look at some of the resources on our website um, and how we can help you out in terms of understanding the curriculum for digital technologies and having a look at how our resources and information map into the curriculum. So that's our plan for today. Move on to the next slide. Yeah. 
Um, here's a little introduction to the turtle. Uh, we have a number of challenges available on the website and I'll show you live on screen shortly where you can find them. And you can see um, the little lifesaver flag there's an example of drawing a shape with the turtle and filling up with color. And you can see a more complicated shape of five pointed star sitting there as well, um, which has been made in the turtle interface. It's a great way to teach coding because you get immediate visual feedback. So if you're trying to draw a square and suddenly your turtle's gone off at an interesting angle, you can see straight away it's very helpful for debugging to see where you want to go and fix things. Um, the other thing we'll do is talk a little bit about angles and some context around that for primary education, because obviously to make the most of the software, uh, we're working on angles and how we can use those. So uh, worth mentioning just on this slide, we've got um, the two here are full DT challenges, and those are expected to take um, about eight weeks of class time, given about an hour of class time a week. Um, and these ones are both minis, so they're much smaller and designed to be done in a much smaller chunk of time, um, but they can be brought out to last a little bit longer. Um, these ones, the little satellites that you can see, are actually what the students will be drawing. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, and the other thing you can see here with the challenges is that they come in pairs. So uh, for both of these challenges, there's a block-based version, uh, which is block coding, which we recommend for primary students, and there's a Python version as well, which is recommended for high school students. Uh, but of course, they're available to all of you. So uh, particularly this year's year seven and eight, there are still students coming through that haven't had much exposure to digital technologies at primary school, and it's perfectly okay to start them off in a block-based language. And likewise, if you've got year six kids who um, are really familiar and have done a lot of block-based coding, having a look at the Python course is an interesting way to sort of get them thinking about text-based language and wanting to have a go. And you can actually switch and have a look at Python as you're coding with Blockly, which we'll demonstrate shortly, which is a nice way to introduce the concepts. Let's move on to the next slide. And at this point, I will try and take control of your screen, Lindsay. Okay. So I pass that on to you. I have asked. And yours. Okay. So, how will I get out of presentation mode? Let me think about that. Uh, escape key? Do you have one on the map? I don't know. I do. I think I need to use a mouse though. There you go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, let's have a little, uh, we're going to spend a few minutes on our website looking at the curriculum page and understanding where the context is for what we're about to talk about to help you as you plan and look at coding resources. So the first place we'll have a look is on the ACA's website. And um, I'm on the resources page here. You can find everything we talk about today on this page. There's a lot of information and a lot of resources. So our first recommendation obviously is to use the filtering. And we are looking at primary resources. So I can find everything suitable for years three and four, five and six. Um, as Lindsay mentioned, we have DT challenges and mini challenges. So depending on the time commitment, uh, if I click on the mini challenges, this will show me everything we have available for years five, uh, three to six, which is on a shorter time frame, a smaller challenge. And you can see in here we cover micro bits, um, Blockly satellite, which is one of the things we will be looking at today with the turtle. And we also have some scratch courses. So you can continue to filter until you find the right resource. Today we're talking about the turtle. So let's have a look. Something there I need to move. Um, part of my screen's concealed, so I can't filter it anymore, but that's all right. Having a look at the turtle resources, if I jump into this one here and ask for more info, this will take you to a page that gives you access to some really important support things. We have teacher notes here and an offline challenge. So as well as the online coding challenge, you do have access to some extra resources and support. Uh, but really importantly, under here, we have mapped all of our challenges to the key curriculum concepts in the Australian curriculum. Um, obviously, you're teaching to the Victorian curriculum. So um, 
rather than ACs, we have VC uh, content descriptors here, but otherwise the content's very similar between the Australian and the Victorian curriculum. What you'll see here on this page is uh, the implementation content descriptors from the curriculum pulled out. And you can see it spread across the year levels that we teach. As this Blockly Challenge is targeted towards year five and six students, we have mapped it to that year group. And any of the values which are in green and bold means that those concepts are covered in this challenge. So I can see for content descriptor ACTD IP020, we are implementing digital solutions, testing digital solutions, we're using iteration and we're using visual programming. So this is a very useful tool for you to come in as you're investigating resources. If you know exactly what you want to cover, you can get some information straight away before you even sign the students up to see what that course covers. And as you get more familiar with our website, you'll see that these little circle icons here give you that headline information that the Blockly Turtle covers the implementation content descriptor, and then you can drill in to see exactly which part. Uh, the geometry challenge, which um, is also available in Turtle, you can see that covers some other content descriptors as well. Now, if you want to know more about the curriculum, the other page to visit is again on the ACA website forward slash curriculum. This gives you all of the content descriptors for digital, uh, digital technologies split out into these key concepts down the side. Now, obviously at the moment in these webinars, we have a focus on coding. So it's the implementation aspect that we're particularly looking at here. Um, last week, if you were able to join us and have fun making sandwiches and so on, um, I heard that James remembered his Vegemite, which is great because that doesn't always happen. Um, algorithms were one of the content descriptors you looked at last week. So obviously the digital technologies curriculum is more than just coding. And you can see that full picture from this curriculum page uh, and you can unpack and look at what these things mean. So if you're interested in digital systems, you can unpack that descriptor. And now you can see across all the year groups exactly what is covered in that digital systems um, content descriptors. Drill right into more detailed information of what that content looks like at different year groups. And across the top here, you can also unpack it by stage. So if we go and have a look at year five and six, you have a really nice description here of how all of those different areas mesh together into the overall description for year five and six digital technologies. So please make use of this resource. Lindsay, do we have anything else to add in terms of curriculum coverage? Um, I guess the, the thing I would kind of say is um, as per kind of everything else, I'm sure this is kind of something you already know, but um, by covering each of these elements, it's it's not gonna it's gonna take a bit of repetition to really get um, get that content description covered, but um, at least with those elements touching on the elements as often as you can will really help drive through um, drive through the content description. Um, so today we'll be focusing on the implementation one because that is the the turtle covers most of if not all of that. Okay, so if we go back into our presentation. Just trying to get back in there. Am I still controlling or are you controlling the team? Uh, you are, but uh, the problem is that my. If I just take control for a second? Yeah, go for it. I can move it out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I keep getting that too, like little hoverovers and annotation tools and things block parts of my screen. Okay, so we've covered the key concept here. Uh, Are you back in control? I think you're in control at the moment. Um, pass it over to you there. There you go. Right. Now. And test. Okay. I'll go try it. To actually, okay. I've lost my window, Lindsay. Sorry. That's all right. 
There you are. Okay, I'm back. Excellent. Okay, with that curriculum background, what I would like to do now and looking at the time is um, start to talk a little bit about how we make decisions in code. This is one of the really key concepts that first popped up for year three and four students. Um, it's really integral to understanding how to get code to work. If, if you can't make decisions in code, what happens in your coding is you run from top to bottom and you can't take account of any situations that happen and come up. So if you were writing some code to get you to and from school, if you couldn't make decisions, it would have to say, walk out the door, go to school, arrive at school. Now, if we can start to bring decisions into our algorithms and our code, we can do things like turn around corners and walk in straight lines and avoid obstacles and take input from our users and start to understand um, what's going on around us and how our code can be flexible and adapt to different situations. So this week in the activity on Thursday, we're going to play some games and reinforce the idea of if then with the students that can join us. Um, it increases in complexity as the students get older, obviously, and more capable. But in its simplest form, an if statement is um, just one part. So we have some examples here. If it's raining, use an umbrella. It's as simple as it can be. Uh, key thing to note from that is that um, if it's not raining, we don't do anything. So that's our simplest branching statement. I'm going to if we can move to a more complicated one, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat and just move some of the windows around on my screen. Uh, with the students in the seminar, we're going to do ones that each student will have different answers. So, for example, we might ask them, if your birthday is in January, February or March, put an A in the chat channel and then talk to them about what happens if your birthday is in May or June. And obviously the answer there is that we do nothing. So why don't we try that as an example now? Go ahead, if it's your birthday in January, February or March, you can pop an A in the chat channel. And let me just sort this out. Okay. I've lost visibility on the chat, Lindsay. Just trying to sort out. Okay. There we go. Okay. No one's got a birthday in January, February or March. Okay, let's try again. If your birthday is in January, February or March, put an A in the chat, or if it's from April to December, put a B in the chat. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so we can see now that everybody's required to do something. And that's the key difference that we're looking at with students is the difference between teaching about if and teaching them about the next sort of level of complexity, which is if and then else. So when we have an if and an else command, we're requiring people to take an action, whether or not the condition's true. So what we're going to experiment with is an activity to highlight that. And here we go. Um, I've just, sorry, yanked control real quick. Um, I think, should we, can I just ask the group in general, how comfortable are we with if statements and else statements? Do you know what they are, what they do? We do have a slide that kind of goes over them a little bit more explicitly. Um, if anyone would like that, they also let us know that you just want us to go over if and else, what they do. Thanks, Jason. Anyone else? Okay, cool. I'll Good. Come back. Okay, so we're going to try this with the children. Um, we're going to explain we're doing an activity with cards. So each time we pull a card, if the card is red, we get two points. And that's the simplest version. So everyone can put in the chat for me now for the two cards displayed on the screen, how many points would we get? Thanks, Jason. Okay. 
Excellent. Okay. So we understand that one. That's pretty straightforward. Um, and with the students, we'll also be able to hold up cards. I'll make sure the blurring's not working. Um, and be able to run through different examples. So when I hold up a black card, we'll get them to pop in the chat how many points. And obviously in the situation that I'm presenting on the screen, there would be zero points. Okay. Now. Here's my next example. So this is an example of an is if statement with an else statement. So if we run through that scenario for each card that we pull from the pack, a three and a nine, what would our total number of points be? Excellent, we've got the hang of that one. Good. So you can see that for each card, there was a score. So once we've incorporated this else statement, each card scores some number of points and we have to decide if the card is red or if it's not red, we get just the single point. And just looking back at that one, I think uh, for year three and four students, um, if they, students build up a strong understanding of if and else, and they're feeling confident with that, that's a really good place to get to for year three and four. For year five and six students, we might throw in another factor, which is else if. So now we've got three options. I'll give you a moment to look at that one. And ask for those two cards again, how many points would we score? Okay, so we've got some different options coming through there and this can get very, um, it can get confusing quickly for the kids. Um, so you want to trace through with them. You might even write it on the board. And what I'd suggest doing is you can even you know, project this onto a smart board or write it on a piece of paper and get a pen and trace through what each card would do. So I can see for the yellow red, that would have to come out as two points. For the black nine, um, I ignore the first part because it's a black card. And then I look at whether it's greater than eight. Now my nine's greater than eight, so I score a three and that's five in total. Um, if my red card had been a 10, one really important thing to notice with the students is that because the card is red, I get two points. I don't then get to come back for a second by the cherry and get three points because it was a 10. So I only have one path out of this block of code. Once I've gone out at a higher level, that's it. I'm done. So we'll run through some activities with the students and work with them. It seems to be um, this third block can take a while to grasp. So we'll do a few examples and we'll try and get the kids to share in the chat their scores and have a go with them and get that concept better down. Because once you understand um, the difference between those three scenarios that we've presented, from the very simple if statement to adding an else and adding an else if, um, that really helps students with their basic understanding and coding. And particularly for three and four, once you've mastered this concept with an input, you've almost covered all you need to for coding and implementation. Now the next big thing that we're going to look at with the students, uh, once we start doing the turtle and geometry, obviously that brings in the idea of angles and turns. So I'm going to pass across to Lindsay, who's going to talk us through this slide, and then we'll get stuck into some coding as well. Thank you. Um, so yes, as Nicola mentioned, um, when we move into the Turtle programming in Grok, um, one of the things that Turtle does is you can draw, and to do so it needs to at some point turn, uh, and it, it operates turning by turning at an angle. Um, so for the younger students, we do have blocks that will say things like turn left and turn right, and that'll give them only the option to go at a 90 degree angle. Um, and so that is what this point here um, for levels kind of F to 2, 3 and 4, they don't explicitly have to know degrees in angles until um, levels 5 and 6. Um, but 
they can still um, work in the turtle interface with these left and right turns. Um, but it is a really good introduction. It's a really good way to get a lot of visual feedback about the sides of angles, what they look like. Um, and so we found that turtle can be a really good introduction if you haven't covered them in class yet. Um, so what we have done is we'll be going through an angles activity with the students um, on Thursday. And uh, we've made up this little 360 degree protractor. Uh, so the key point is not the, the degrees, they're a bit too small to see. And in the example, uh, we'll show you a little bit later, you can't really make out the degrees. Um, the key point is that we have uh, the 90 degree points highlighted by something. Um, can anyone tell me what this bird is, by the way? If you do know, pop it in the chat, I'll give you a hint, it's not an emu. Um, so what we'll be doing is we'll have a character that has a line of sight and we have, um, he'll start facing uh, zero, which will be the koala. And then we will add in some blocks or you can tell them, tell the students to, it will turn right by 90 degrees, then write another 180 degrees, um, which way is it gonna be facing? Um, and when we go into graph, it'll be a little bit more specific. So I might just do that now. So we've got this here. So this is our little demo website. I'm going to zoom in a bit to make it a little bit easier to see. Um, can everyone read um, the blocks and things like that? Ah, yes, Eric has got it. The bird is a cassowary. So uh, level two of the how's your Aussie flora and fauna. Uh, what kind of tree is it on the right hand side? <laughs> We've got a cassowary down the bottom, but what's this one here? So this is our, this is our character. He's a one bot. And so what we'll be doing is we'll be telling the students about right angles and how right angles are 90 degrees in size. And so if I ask the students, uh, if a Wombot turns 90 degrees to the right, what's it going to be looking at? And what we can do here is say to the right and 90 degrees. And I'll say, when I run this code, what's the Wombot going to be looking at afterwards? Does anyone want to have a, have a guess? Turning right at nine degrees. Erica, again with the with the awesome flora and fauna, that is a barb tree indeed. It's going to be looking at the barb tree. So if I click run just at the top here, um, our little wombat is turning right 90 degrees and is going to be looking at our tree. So um, we'll add a few layers of complexity um, as we go. My, here we go. So if he turns right at 90 degrees, but then he goes left at 180 degrees, where are we going to land? Anyone know? Anyone want to take a guess, take a stab before we click run? Koala from uh, right 90, then left 180, yeah. So if I run this, we're going to turn right 90 degrees and then we're going to left 180 degrees. So we're actually going to end up all the way back at the hat. Um, that was tricky because you started off pointing at the bulb. I did. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. I didn't make that explicit. Um, the bomb bot will always start uh, in the original position. It will always start um, facing the koala. Uh, all righty. Yes. So the woman will always start facing the koala. Um, and then we'll run our blocks from there. Um, so what this is particularly useful for is that when they are going to be programming in turtle, when the turtle is turning to the left or to the right, it's relative to the turtle's position. So currently we're looking at the Wombot. On the Wombot's left is the cassowary. On the Wombot's right is the koala. So that's not our natural left and right, and that will be taking, it always turns to the right, does it? Oh. Okay, maybe that What's that, Lindsay? Um, I think Owen was saying that the turtle always turns to the right. Um, which I'm not entirely sure it about. It always starts to the right when you start a new turtle program. When you start a new turtle program, yes. Ah. 
Um, but like I was saying, it'll be relative to the total. So this, the, the goal of this activity is going to be to have the students learn the left and right relative to the character, in this case, a wombat. And then when we move to turtle, they'll be able to work relative to the left and right of the turtle. And then understanding that 90 degree angles um, are right angles and that um, they can work up to 360. And that a 360 degree turn is going to do the full circle. One off. Almost there. All righty. So we'll be running that one with the students. Um, and now for the last 15 minutes, we thought we might dive into um, the turtle on grok learning and do a bit more of a walkthrough of the platform there so when we get into grok learning on the front page we'll want to click on the australian competing academy to filter by hours and then a bit further down you've got turtle under language um turtle is actually an implementation of a language called logo which may be around the 1960s um, but you can work in uh, Blockly or Python in Grok. So let's jump into the Turtle Challenge. So this is the um, full DT challenge. There's quite a lot going on. But we're just going to look at the first two modules to start with. So this is the Turtle, a bit smaller than the Wombot. Um, but as you can see, you've got the head, which tells you which direction it's facing, and that's there to help you get your left-right orientation. Um, I'll just do a very quick run through of the platform. So as a teacher, you'll have access to the teacher's notes, uh, which will be throughout the pages and um, the questions. And that'll have a few more kind of bits of information um, about the content that's on the slides. And from the first page, you'll also have access to teacher notes and a bit more information about the challenge. Um, so let's have a look at the first turtle question that's in here. So the goal here is to write a program to move the turtle forward 100 steps. Um, and as Owen mentioned, when the turtle starts out, so if I just put zero, um, you can't see the turtle animation because we haven't run anything yet. Um, so if I just put zero and click run, you'll be able to see this is how the turtle starts. This is the starting position of the turtle. And as Owen mentioned, it is facing to our right, um, but for the turtle, this is the turtle's left, and this is the turtle's right. So we just need the turtle to match this image here, so we'll need to move it 100 steps and click run, and we can see what this does. Um, let's just do it 50 steps and click run. This looks similar. Right, the turtle kind of looks like it's supposed to. I think I've got it right. If I'm a student, I'm still figuring out what I'm doing. I think that looks about right. So I'm going to go mark. Am I sure? Yes. So what's really great about, um, as we mentioned, you get a lot of visual feedback as a student when you're doing the coding, watching the turtle move around the screen. Um, there's also great visual feedback when you're marking. So the dotted line here will show the student where the turtle should end up. Um, and it can be a really valuable tool. So something that I would highly recommend um, and that we will do during the webinar is um, getting students to deliberately get something wrong so that they can see that there's a lot of help available once you do marking and uh, that everything doesn't catch fire and break and they've destroyed their program um, just by getting the question wrong. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, so up here it says, this is what I was testing testing the line, and then it's got a big red letters. Did you forget to change the length to 100? Well, that makes a lot of sense. So now if I go in and I go to my length and I say 100 and I click run and I watch my total, yep, that looks about the same. Okay, let's mark that one and submit. Hey, all green, happy days. Um, so there's a couple of different um, ones here. In this one, you'll be drawing um, a square using your turn right and turn left. Uh, this is what I mentioned before in that um, you don't have to cover angles if you are teaching Premiere 4 to start with. 
um, but they do show up in module two, which is here. Uh, yep. Lindsay, I was just going to add, if you jump back into that previous problem, um, one thing I mentioned before in terms of uh, choosing the right kind of challenges to work on with your students, in the code window here, you can see um, actual Python code, which maps to the Blockly block. So if you have students in the upper primary years who are starting to get uh, curious about typed code and want to have a look at Python, they can come down here and see straight away, you know, that a turn right is implemented in Python as right 90. And as you add sort of forward commands left and right, that will build up um, an example of Python in this window that they can jump into and have a look. And that will help them as they start to transition into text-based coding. Yes. Um, so something else that I want to use uh, this question to highlight um, that can be really frustrating for students. Um, as amazing as the visual feedback and the visual marking can be, it does have a big drawback, which is the turtle itself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into solutions and I'm going to say try this solution. So if I run this program, there goes our turtle. So we move forward 50 steps, drawing our first line. Um, remembering our turtle starts facing right, so drawing pause straight away is going to send us to the right of the screen. Turn right, move forward, turn right, move forward. It looks right. So if I change this, however, and I say 48 steps because I wasn't paying that much attention and I've just typed the wrong thing and then I run it and hey, look, it still works, right? That's the perfect square. It looks exactly the same as this one. But if I go to mark it as a student, I'm going to get a failed response. My program did not draw the left side of the square correctly. It looks like it though. Uh, this matches the lines, the dots, everything looks the same. The problem is that my turtle is in the way. So what you can do is you can click this little button here. Maybe 48 is a bit of a bad example. Let's go 40, so it's a bit more obvious. Run that one. Click that one to remove the turtle. And now you can see that there's a mistake hiding underneath the turtle there. Um, so I really wanted to show that because we do get a lot of um, students that can get quite frustrated because it looks like it's done. Uh, especially when they start using the fill function. Uh, it's much like the paint bucket function if you've ever used it and you go to click fill and the whole screen suddenly goes orange because you've missed one tiny pixel when you thought you'd made the square. The same thing can happen with turtle. Um, so that is definitely something to keep an eye for. And you can um, test that in here as well. So you can run through that one with students and we will suggest that to them as well. So the last thing I'll do is jump on to here and we can have a look at our angles. So angles are introduced with this really awesome interactive just here. So this is where the one bot that we were working with is going to come in handy with a 90 degree angle there. And um, if you look at the orientation of the turtle, the turtle's left the terms right. Um, it's very hard to catch, but there it goes. Okay, so if I just get rid of this one here. Might just spend the last couple of minutes to see if um, we can figure this one out together. So we've got our helpful turtle down here if we do get stuck. Our instructions are to build a very steep bowl shape into a plate. The lines should all remain the length they are, 50 total steps. So if I go here, I can reset to see reset. So this is the code that we start with here. So we need to turn this code, which draws our very steep bowl, and we need to turn it into our plate just over here. So would people like to let me know in the chat what we need to do to turn our steep bowl into a chat, maybe step one something that we might want to change. Feel free to jump in with questions too. If you anyone wants to take the microphone off, you're welcome to chat through it. Mm, absolutely. So we've had some responses that say we need to turn right 45 degrees. 
Okay, so we have our turn right and we're going to change that to 45 degrees. Uh, and now we'll run the program and see what happens. Okay. Close but no cigar. What's the next step? We seem to have the first edge of this correct. That matches. So what can we do? Move forward 50 steps. Yep, so we do that, we've turned right. So we start by turning right. So for example, let's just take some that one, one. So that's our right turn there, yep. And then we move forward 50 steps. That's it. After the move forward block, we'll turn left by 45 degrees. Okay, let's add that one in. So now we turn right at the start, then we draw this 50 steps. Then we're gonna turn left 45 degrees and draw 100, move 100 steps. So hopefully we get the base of our bowl. So if I could run here, hey, it's looking good. It's looking good, we're almost there. So after we move forward, the last change we're going to need to do is go to 45 degrees and move forward 50 steps. And just to be just to be absolutely kind of clear here, when, when it says here, calculate the size of the turns you need to make. The angle between the plate side and the plate base is 135 degrees. So we can go down here and say, okay, it's 135 degrees between do, 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 let's get to 135. So here's our 45 degree angle hiding in here. This is our total angle. And that's where that one's coming from. So we'll start like this, and then we need to turn right 45 degrees. So we're going to the right 45 degrees, or close enough. And there's our 135 degree angle as well. So you can talk about inner and outer angles if you like, but um, just having this here is very helpful. Um, all right, run this and have a check. Looking good to me. Let's mark it off. There we go. Um, so I hope that was helpful with regards to navigating the platform. Does anyone have any questions about um, the turtle platform or coding with the turtle? Can anyone sort of foresee any issues their student might have that they wanted us to just look over or see if we can address? One of the things I was going to suggest in here, depending on how you use the challenge, um, and you'll know your students better than us, if, if you're interested, you can do the full challenge and that would take six to eight hours. Um, you can dive in and just do the modules that make sense to you. Or if you're really short on time, you can use this screen um, with the students as a bit of a playground. So now that you've done the plate, you could do things like pick letters of the alphabet, like mine's easy, my name's Nicola, I start with a capital N, and you can think about how you can use these tools to trace and have the students work with pen and paper to think about doing a line with some angles, and then they can come in here and use this as a bit of a playground to see what they can create as well and go through that process of problem solving with trial and error and get to an end result. Um, so you don't need to do the full challenge. It's great if you want to, but you can use this in whatever way makes sense with the students um, and give them a chance to practice the skills and do the problem solving um, and work it out for themselves. The one other thing that I will say uh, that is quite useful um, when I've done this with other teachers is having um, some post-its, um, students that may struggle with the direction. Um, it's red, which is terrible because all my post-its are bright colors. Um, but if you have... So this is very hard to see, but um, just an arrow that points direction and I've highlighted left and right. So now I can put that down 
Let me not see my post it so I can put that down and say, okay, it's facing this way. And then in my code, it says turn left. So pick it up and I go like this. And now I know which way left and right is with my character having turned left. And as I'm reading through my code, I can go, okay, left turn block, turn left, and a right turn block, okay, then like this, and then another right turn block, okay, like this. Um, and again, it's a little bit of um, physical visual feedback that um, can be very useful when you're working with turtle programs, just having that little bit of extra orientation there if their turtle isn't quite doing the right thing. Uh, shall we jump back to the presentation, Nicola? Let's do it. And I think um, we're right on finishing time, so I think you've got control of the screen. Um, we hope that you'll join us on Thursday. I think in terms of what we wanted to cover today, was there anything else? Let me have a look. Um, since you were all here last week, hopefully you've had a chance to get students signed up in the GROP platform. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop us an email on that and we can jump in and help you out with any setup questions that you have. Um, and likewise, if you're wanting to, uh, if your teacher colleagues want to get involved and set up the classroom and they have any questions, just direct them to us. Um, We've included links here, finally, for the curriculum and the resources pages, which we ran through at the beginning of the presentation. And just like that, I've covered the rest of the presentation, Lindsay. 